Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Molly from Molly's Artistry, and today I wanted to go over some different techniques for blending acrylic paint. These are really the techniques that I use in my abstract artwork, and I thought it would be beneficial for others to see real time how the materials that I use and how I paint them onto the canvas. Don't forget to check the description box below. You'll find links for all the materials that I used there. Don't forget to drop me a comment and let me know if you've tried these techniques. Have they worked for you? Are you still struggling with something? Let me know and I'll see if I can help. If you're new, please consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. Without further ado, let's go. So before we get started, I just wanted to show you guys the materials that I use. A lot of people ask me about these little brushes and they are paddle brushes. And this one actually, it's pretty stiff on the, on the bristles and so I can blend that. Um, I can use thick paint and it really helps me get good coverage. But when I go to soft blend, I wanna use soft bristle brushes, which I show you. So this is the, three inch and look I've got I just cleaned it out so I've actually got stuff all over my <laughs> canvas and then so three inch two inch it comes in a one inch and a four inch as well um, this is the mop brush that I was talking about and it is extremely soft and it does really well the only thing about this mop brush is I wish it just wasn't quite so jagged on these little edges right here they come in numbers so this one is a 20 if you can see that right there and it's just in correlation to what the size is of the brush this one i use for regular abstract or acrylic painting um, but it is not this is a 16 but this is not what i normally use i may lay the paint down with this but it's not normally what i use to blend with this believe it or not is a makeup brush and the bristles are so soft in this now what you'll want to do especially if you're using makeup brushes and i know this may be controversial for some people but you'll want to try to pick out the little pieces that are in there because these are not made like artist brushes the bristles are not made as good um but you, you could definitely use these, and I just really like the soft blending that it gives me. This is just a flat brush. I'm not gonna use this one today, um, but just wanted to show you some of the different ones. So this is an artist flat brush here, like from a little set, and you can see it says, let me see if I can get you in on that. It says flat brush right there, and it gives you, this is an 11. But then here are other flat brushes, right? And these have soft bristles as well. So you can see the soft bristles there. And those are, this is really good to help kind of blend as well. So I use these. I wanted to show you the different mediums that are here. And there's more mediums. Uh, you don't have to use Liquitex brand. I'm not affiliated with them. It's just what I had lying around to do the video. But glazing medium is really good to mix with the paints so that um, after a paint layer has dried, you can glaze over the top of it and almost have like a translucent effect. The blending medium is um, what a lot of people use to just mix in their paints. It extends the drying time and so does this slow dry fluid retarder. Some people also just use a little bit of glycerin and water. They make their own mediums. Um, so today, I'm actually not gonna use any of these mediums. I'm just gonna do this with paint and water to show you some easy beginner techniques. All right, let's get started. Okay, I'm using canvas. You could use board. Mine come pre-gessoed, but they could be um, unprimed and you could put some gesso or some Kills primer or some type of primer on there. One of the most important parts is to make sure that you're working, if you're working a larger area, you want to have the right sized brush 
to do the work that you're doing. So I would never use this tiny brush to blend this entire area. You want to have something that has good coverage for the area. I'm also using acrylic paints, obviously. I'm using Amsterdam here. You can use any type of acrylic paint. I personally like some that have a kind of a medium body. So there are fluid acrylics, which are very thin. I actually have one right here. And these are very, very thin. Um, the medium body paints can stand on their own, but they still have a soft kind of smooth, creamy feel to them. There are also hard body, um, which are kind of a thicker base. And sometimes if you're trying to blend those, you really want to mix those with some type of medium or maybe a little bit of water to make them a little bit creamier. So the first technique that I'm going to do is a wet on wet. So I'm going to take my brush here and I have these little cups of water set out so I'm going to take my brush dry it off just a little bit and I'm just gonna just dampen the canvas this is gonna allow the paint to glide on smooth and allow for better blending so the next thing I'm going to do, so for wet on wet, next thing I'm going to do is take a little bit of my darkest color. I'm going to do dark to light here. And I'm just going to put a little bit of that on the canvas. Okay. I'm going to take my next color and give myself some room here and put that one on the canvas. Take my last color down here, put some of that on the canvas. And now I'm going to take my wet brush on the wet canvas, and the brush is not super wet, it's just damp, right? And then I'm just gonna start spreading this out. Now you can see on the canvas itself, it actually comes through almost like a translucent layer. So a lot of times, because I like my layers to be thick, I don't actually um, use the wet canvas part. And already you can tell it's damp, but it's already starting to dry. So now I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of this color and just kind of blend it up through here. Okay, now when I get to this lighter color here, and if you guys, if the canvas is drying on you, or if the paints are drying on you, I mean, just spritz it with a little water bottle. You could do water or a little bit of water and glycerin just to wet, re-wet the paints so that they're more workable. So before I get to this set right here, now I'm actually gonna take the paint that's on my brush because I really like that color, and I'm gonna put it back on my canvas, on my little palette. So I'm just gonna clean off this brush a little bit before I get into that lighter color. Because if my brush is loaded, and it doesn't have to be perfect, you see there's still a little bit of blue in there, but if this was loaded with color, I wouldn't get this light gradient that I'm looking for. So here we go. I'm gonna work my way up. And work my way down. And if you wanted to have some white at the bottom here, you could do that as well. And you can see the canvas dried a little bit more as I worked my way down here. And so the colors are really staying kind of a little bit more true on the canvas. You can't see the canvas come through as much. See, I've got some of these little lines down here. Don't worry about that. All you do is just wipe it off and just slowly work back over it. Okay, and that is the first technique. So it's just a wet on wet technique. You wet the canvas, you have your brush a little bit damp, and you could just, you could continue going over this as many times as you want. Just wipe your 
brush off in between as you hit layer to layer or if you want some of that color to come on down through there. Okay. And you could just keep going that way. Okay, so now I'm gonna wash my brushes off again and I'm gonna show you a dry on wet technique where I wet the, the canvas is dry, but I wet the brush. If your paints are drying, like I said again, you can just spritz them. So these are dry almost but I'm gonna try to blend back in through here and we'll see if that works. So I've washed my brush off again. And this time, this technique is actually pretty good for um, clouds and skies. So I'm gonna take another kind of short hair flat brush and I'm just gonna wet it. I'm just gonna dip it in and then squeeze it out so that there's not a ton of water, but you just want it damp through here. So the canvas is now dry, and what I'm gonna do on my palette is pick up some of the paint, okay? And I'm gonna start with the darker again. Pick up some of the paint off of there, and sometimes you may even want to re-dip into the water and then swirl this around to get a good, nice coat there, okay? So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna scrub. I'm gonna scrub it all around here because that's where I want my darker portion. And so you can see here, as I was scrubbing, so like sometimes little pieces of the hair will come off and I just pick those off and go back over it, okay? So that's the one thing, like I said, about the makeup brushes. I can take care of those a little bit later. Nothing to worry about. And so what's happened here, there was like a very hard line from this right here, the original painting. But what I've done is with the paint on the brush, I've just kind of made that line disappear by scrubbing through here, okay? So now I'm gonna pick up again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean my brush off and it's gonna have water on it from cleaning it off. And then I'm gonna pick up some of this color right here. And I'm gonna run this color Again, this is dry canvas and wet paint here. So I'm gonna run this on through here. And there you go. Now, cleaning it off. And I had three little cups here because I like to clean in my own color. I don't like to mix the colors because your water gets muddy and then your brush will get muddy. So I like to keep them all separate, but that's just me. Okay, so this last one that I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this color, pick it up, and I'm gonna run this on through here. And you guys will see this kind of start to come to life. Maybe I want a little bit right over here. That's totally up to you. Again, I have used enough paint that it's not drying on me immediately. Now this over here is pretty dry already, okay? But this here is still very workable. Maybe I wanna come up into here with it a little bit because that's a better color, almost matching this color right here. And look at that right there. It just blends right on in and you could even come straight back over that, right? So now we're gonna keep on blending a little bit here. And you can blend on in here. But this is where the magic happens next, is I take a dry brush, okay? And while this is still relatively wet and workable, I just come right on in here and I just mix those together. And if there's enough paint on there and you've already laid your gradient down, okay, so I've already placed the gradient where I want it, right? And ugh, these little hairs, but look, take a hair out, comes right out. So I've already laid the gradient down where I want it. If your paint is starting to pull up from the canvas, 
That could mean a couple of different things. That could mean that this is now too wet, so I will just take a paper towel and just dry it off. So just like that, okay? So dry this off and then you just keep coming on in here and just in circular motions, blending them together. And you can blend on through here. Blend the two of those. Now right here are little spots where, this is wet now, and tiny little bristles picked up paint and flicked it off. So I like to have a couple of different brushes to work with at a time so that if that happens, I can just go back in and layer some other paint in there. So see, now I'm starting to dry, which is okay. This is okay. You don't freak out at this moment because there are tons of things you can do. Acrylics are about layers. You can either put another layer down and blend the two together, which is I'll try to do maybe a little bit later on. Or you could just re-wet your brush or you could spray it with a little bit of spray. And you will have to rework it. You will have to go back over it. So this is in circular motions. This is in lines, okay? And now we're gonna go to dry on dry, which is one of my favorite techniques. Okay, so dry on dry means dry canvas. And I'm going to put the paints down. So dry canvas, and technically it's wet paint, but I'm not dipping my brush in anything, so I say that this is dry on dry. This is gonna give a really chunky feel to the paint, to the painting, I should say and just an overall just really thick coverage. And you can create designs in it with your brushes, which I like to do a lot as well. So I'm going to, I normally start by spreading it out with my paddle brush again, and I'll use the, the larger one here so you can see. But I just kind of work my way across for coverage. It's very similar to the, the first technique, except I feel like you get much better coverage this way. And the colors still blend. Come down here. Now, see, down here, a couple of things. I normally work with much more paint on my canvas when I do this technique, so you can see the paint is already starting to dry a little bit, but that's okay. So from here, what I actually like to do, I like to take my brush that already has paint on it, and this one you can make, because it's still got such a thick layer, you can actually make designs in it with the paint that's on your brush in a gradient. And they still all blend together. I could pick up maybe some lighter color here because I've still got paint on the canvas and I could maybe take that and draw a line through it. So this is where it's really fun to kind of create different techniques. So here, so here I loaded the brush with lighter colors on one side darker colors on another, and then I blended them together this way. So here, I'm gonna pick up, I think just maybe the rest of what's on my palette here, and maybe some of this blue, and then I'm gonna take it and you can come up this way with it. Same thing. So I'm taking the colors that are on my brush and using them to make a gradient this way. You wanna make sure you don't turn your brush this way because your colors will be different. So you wanna keep it the same. But that's how I make those kind of chunky lines and designs when I'm doing my abstract work. Okay, and you could come back through here one more time to kind of soften that up 
What that is, is this tip of color right here. So you could always just wipe that off and then keep painting. But that's how you create those kind of chunky lines that you see in my work sometimes. So I'm gonna do the darker edge over here. So you can just come right back over here. And you could keep going all day. Sometimes I take my brush straight up this way to create kind of like a little garden of hidden stuff. And there you go. So that is a totally different way to blend things using just dry paint on a, I mean, it's wet paint, but dry brush on a dry canvas, lay it down, and then you can take a larger flat brush, go over it with preloaded paint and create a different design. Now, so we'll come back to the middle for a second because I want you guys to see, I wanna help you troubleshoot some of this stuff. So I wanted to come back to the center for a second to show you. When I had the wet brush and I was scrubbing and my actual brush that I was using became too wet, it picked up paint off the canvas and I ended up with these striations. Now I actually like these, so this is not a problem for me. I like texture in my artwork. But if you wanted a very smooth base or say you weren't gonna put another layer on top of this, you could, um, you could put another layer on top and that would help blend kind of all of this together. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna use my same brush that I was using before, wet it, just damp, take some of the Prussian blue that was up here, Okay, put it back down. Take some of my, and I'm using a good amount of paint on the canvas. That's really the only way that you're gonna, be, not the only way, but that's one of the, the ways that you'll be able to ensure that you can get a good blend. Now the coverage on this is much better than the first time around. So sometimes it may just take layers and layers for you to get what you're looking for. And that's acrylic paint for you. Okay, so I've got that mixed in here and then I'm gonna wash this off so that I can get my light color in there. And so that is a big troubleshooting issue for some people is that they don't use enough paint. This was a very thin layer of paint and it was wet on wet. Acrylic paint over here on all acrylic paint dries by evaporation. So if there's water in it and you're in a different humidity or you're in a warmer place, it may dry much faster for you. So those are all things you can mitigate that a little bit by keeping a thick layer and making sure that it's wet. So here I am here. I'm back to this point again. And so what I'm gonna try to do is just blend this. Now some of you, you know, this is still a blending technique. This is a gradient technique here. If you just worked this in circles all the way around. What I would recommend is getting a smaller, I mean, a, a different brush. Just working it all the way around, you can create a gradient that way as well. But what I'm gonna do is soft again. Just come right back in here. And you see how it picks up the paint just a little and it just blends it right in to the other color. And this I love. This is very pretty. I hope that you guys can see it the same that I do on, on the screen. Gorgeous. And even on this outer edge here, see how that kind of just blended right in? I 
And all that is is just a dry circular brush making circular brush strokes. I'm gonna blend it in over here a little bit. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now you could take some of this blue and circle it into your other colors. You don't have to go fast. And then that could, and again, if you're pressing too hard, you're gonna get a lot of those kind of striation marks. So you just wanna go slow and light. And you could spend as much time as you want on this, blending this out, getting this exactly the way that you want. And as long as you're working with it, spritzing your palette maybe a little bit, making sure that your brushes are clean when they need to be. Like, see, I have too much paint of one color up here. So I need to really... Something else you may want to do is if you're only working with a limited set of brushes, you may want to go dry them out, let them sit and, and come back to the work, but that's why I like to have multiple, multiple brushes to work with at one time. Because again, you don't have a ton of time to work with these acrylics unless you're just gonna settle for doing layers. So there we go, I came back in. This seems like it would be a great scene for clouds or something like that. And then again, on this one, the canvas is showing through. I really don't mind this at all, but if you want it, you could put another layer over this as well. You could blend it this way instead. So you could go over this section again if you wanted. Um, I'm gonna leave it for the sake of this video so that it's not too long for you. But if you're troubleshooting and you're like, okay, well I can see the lines of the canvas through here, right? I could have taken a soft brush after I brushed this and made it a little bit, you know what, why don't I just show you? I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna take, I have enough paints on my board here. So I'm gonna take my middle color. And this will be, this is already dry, so I'm just gonna come back over with it dry. back in with this down at the bottom and I'll just squeeze a little bit onto the canvas. Who cares, right? I think maybe I want a little bit more. So you've seen the wet on wet and you can kind of see the canvas through it, but it is great for layering a base color and blending it in. This time I'm going to use my little paddle brush here. My brand is, this one's the Liquitex one, but depending on the, the country that you're in, they may have different ones. Okay, so here. And then again, remember when I get down to this one, I don't wanna take this blue all the way in, but I can take the light blue back up to the dark blue. That's okay. And it's okay to take the, the dark down into the light, but you're gonna really saturate the, the light color. So here I am right here. This is kind of my rough blend. So see, look, I'm gonna be dangerous. I'm gonna take the dark into the light here. Okay, doesn't look bad, doesn't look bad. Just changed the color of the light. So here I am, I've worked it back and forth, back and forth, getting a little bit lighter paint here at the top, right? So now what I can do is take my soft bristled brush and I'm just gonna come in and you could brush it this way as well, but you're gonna be brushing the colors over the, the light, over the dark and the dark over the light. So what you'll end up getting is really one solid color that way. What you wanna do is whatever way that you were brushing the strokes on, you want to brush in that same direction. So a lot of people say, well, I applied it this way and then I brushed this way. Well, yeah, you're gonna end up with a solid color, right? So now I'm just gonna come through in the areas that I want it to be kind of a better blend. And just really go over those. 
just, I'm, it's very light, very light touch. Okay, so when I get to here, again, you wanna think about wiping your brush off because I've already picked up darker paint here. Okay, there we go. If you get a little bit in there, don't get frustrated. Just keep going over it. And there it is. So I have this brush here. I'm just gonna take, honestly, just a tiny bit of water, okay? And then I wanna dry it out. So you see how saturated that brush, even though I just dried it, how much it got that um, the paper towel saturated? So when I say dry it out, I mean really try to dry it out a little bit. Sometimes I'll even just swirl it on my apron. And then you can come back, I'm gonna dip it just the tiniest bit in some lighter color and come back in and really try to blend those together in some way. So even if it's just like this tiny little, tiny little blend here, that's okay, that works. It's bringing it back into the other colors. And you see these colors had almost dried by the time that I started doing this. So all is not lost. You can reactivate acrylic paint for quite some time actually, even without these blending mediums. Perfect. Okay, so now that I'm down here, troubleshooting issue. Now that I'm down here and I'm picking this up, what did I say to do? Just wipe it off. No big deal, right? No big deal. So I wipe this off and I start back blending again. So those are like some key indicators for you. Like, oh, okay, I'm pulling up paint here so my brush must be wet. You can either grab another brush, right? Or you can put more paint down. I like this because it gives it kind of shadow and hue. Dimension. Okay. But that's it, guys. So this right here could actually be a great backdrop for an abstract painting. It could be, you know, just your practice canvas that you go on. You could hang this up just like this if you liked it. You could use whatever colors you want. Now, the one thing I'll say is that, a couple things. I used color gradients here today. So I used a family of blues. But if you're mixing, say, for a sunset, something like that, you may want to make sure that you wash your paints, very, your brushes very well in between and you wanna make sure that you're getting good kind of clean lines in the middle. And you also want to make sure that when you're blending them, you think about what the colors mix to. So these colors mix to beautiful blues, but not all paints will mix together to make other beautiful colors, right? You can mix a magenta and yellow, you'll get this very vibrant orange. Okay, sometimes a, an orangey red color. Uh, yellow and uh, magenta can make a, a variety of beautiful colors. You can mix together your yellows and your blues and you'll get a beautiful gradient of green. But if you're mixing together your purples and your yellows, sometimes you may get kind of a muddier color that you may want to try to correct or overlay with something else. So thinking about the actual paints themselves um, and how they mix together is really important as well. So some tips to remember, working yourself in one direction, you could go up or down, but not coming back across it this way. You could work in a circular motion here. You may have to, look, I've already touched it. <laughs> you may have to overlay multiple times to get the effect you want, especially if you're blending areas. You wanna make sure you're working with the right size brush for your canvas. Think about all the different techniques that you can do. And most of all, 
Don't be frustrated or upset if it's not working for you. Just make it into something that you really like and that you really enjoy. There's tons of different techniques that you can use here. The last thing is just remember if it dries on you, keep re-wetting your, either your palette or the canvas. You can use a thin spray misting bottle. Um, and the most important part is just have fun with it, right? I hope you guys enjoyed this. Sorry it was so long. <laughs> Drop me a comment down below if you have tried any of these techniques, if you have any other techniques to share with the viewers on my channel that someone could learn from. And just overall, thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, the painting. Bye.